Ladies and gentlemen of Headphones Hi-Fi Reviews, this is Trev and today I have a world first. The Hi-Fi Man HM1000. It is a portable DAC amp but insanely Fang has put in four R2R DAC chips in it. It will be retailing at quite a few thousand dollars or pounds depending on where the world you're in. Not only do I have that with me today on review, I have the Dunu Luma. I don't know if I've pronounced that correctly. The Dunu Luma is a beryllium in your monitor with one driver per side in it and it's got to be one of the finest inner monitors currently available in my opinion and I will be putting the two of these through their paces in the course of the next few minutes. If it looks a bit rough and ready bear with me but believe you me the ride is well worth taking. Ladies and gentlemen the Hi-Fi Man HM1000 lead on Trevor. Good afternoon, this is Trev from Headphones Hi-Fi Reviews here. Uh, I am also a member of HeadFi.org under the name Taken Idea and I am also the staff writer for Subjective Reviews website. And Subjective Reviews have been sent yet another review item. Hopefully we've got a balanced in, if not I've got loads of adapters for this earphone anyway. It's the Dunyu Luma single driver beryllium universal idiom monitor still needing to be unwrapped let's get on with it and let's unveil this to europe and see what it sounds like and there we get the first glimpse of the hm1000 digital audio player get it out of the box Do you know, bless him, I don't think Mark's had this more than one day himself. It's not even advertised on the Hi-Fi Man website, uh, the English one, hi-fi man.com. It's on the Chinese website. There we are. HM1000. Gold effect there, leather effect case, a proper presentation case with a clasp. And there it is, Hi-Fi Man HM1000. Uh, I believe that's the warranty card, is it? Yes, innovating the art of listening. A little velvet presentation. And I don't know if you can see, but I can actually see the circuitry underneath. I can actually see the circuit board underneath the smoked glass. So there looks to be our on-off switch, plus and minus, which presumably is volume control. That must be our SD card insertion port. There we have balanced, 4.4 balanced, and two line outs. Super low gain, low gain and high gain. Input and output toggle switches. And there's our USB. By Jove, I've got it. As you can see, there's a solid blue 
light on this rather warm, almost hot. And that means that we are connected by Bluetooth. We are connected to this device. And the green indicates that we are balanced rather than if I press this once, we are single ended. Scrolling across, balanced, then line out, and then we go back to balanced on the Duna Lumas. So let me press, press this once. And as you can hear, we've got sound on that. So that's wonderful. I will now, bum bum bum, put that on hold. And I will press the input button once. And you see it's gone green. And I will now prove that we have that working properly. So I'm going into Audiovana Plus, Preferences, Audio System, HM1000 is there. I'm going to press play. So I now have it as a Bluetooth DAC amp. HM1000, the world's first four R2R portable DAC amp. Runs really very hot. I'm going to have a listen to it now for an hour. I'm going to compare it against the Chord Mojo, which seems a bit unfair, but I mean, that's even hotter than this one, if that's even possible. And um, I'll get back to you in an hour, which will be about 10 seconds. We've got it working through Bluetooth on the Fio M11 and on my smartphone. Uh, we've got it outputting through the uh, balanced 3.5 connector uh, on super low gain. Um, we've compared it against the Chord Mojo, which is so hot I can hardly hold that. So the copper is actually not as hot as this. Remember, this is the world's first four chip R2R DAC amp that's portable. This is an FPGA bespoke cord setup that I've had for many, many years. And I know the sound of this intimately. Comparing the two, well, there's a considerable cost difference, of course. This will cost approximately 10 times the Chord Mojo because, of course, it's got four R2R DAC chips in it. For those who want to know more about R2R technology, I'm probably not the expert on it, but R2R was the very first type of digital to analog converter out there. So they came in the first CD players that were built by Philips. And rather than being superseded by the modern FPGA and normal chips from Wolfson and the like, R2R has retained a cult following and in fact is some of the most expensive DACs in the world use R2R technology. The Hi-Fi Man HM1000 of course surpassed the sound quality of the Chord Mojo. I mean that's obviously not going to be much of a surprise to any of you, I'm sure. Um, using the Duna Lumas on super low gain with this, this hasn't got any particular gain. 
um, but volume matched to a certain extent. I'm sure it's not perfectly scientifically volume matched. The Mojo was a beautiful sound through the Junalumas, but there was more of everything, bass, detail, you name it. There was a little bit more on the HM1000. I'm not saying 10 times more because of course the law of diminishing returns says that if you want the very best, unfortunately you're not going to get the very best in terms of value for money. The smoke glass exterior, if one turns it to a certain light, you can see the printed circuit board through it. It's got a very brushed delicate luxury feel to it. I'm very privileged to have had the chance to have an initial listen to it and as far as in terms of what you can get from an in-ear monitor, albeit these are beryllium single driver in-ear monitors, um, it can't get much better than the sound that could be achieved through the HM1000. Hi-Fi Man, headphones, hi-fi reviews, followers thank you very much for your time and until the next installment happy listening while i get to spend some more time with the hm1000